All right, my name is Mark Elford, and this is my fuel assignment for the port and, port and helix injection pump. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off with the fuel tank here. In the fuel tank, this is where the fuel is stored and cooled. <coughs> the fuel is then drawn up the standpipe through the primary fuel filter, which filters which traps contaminants larger than 25 microns. The fuel then travels from the primary filter to the transfer pump uh, by a vacuum. There are two types of transfer, pump, transfer pumps that can be used, a uh, plunger and diaphragm. Uh, both of these pumps have a maximum pressure of around 25 to 30 psi. Uh, the fuel then comes from the transfer pump uh, under low pressure uh, through the fuel lines to the secondary fuel filter which traps particles larger than 5 microns. The fuel filter then travels under low pressure through uh, fuel lines and enters the, the port and helix injection pump into the uh, and fills the main fuel gallery which like I said has around 30 psi due to the transfer pump pressure. Fuel then enters the barrel uh, through the fill and spill ports and fills the area which is this area right here and this one here here around the helix around the uh, around the plunger uh, the barrel is connected if I go to this page here the barrel is connected to the fuel rack by a control sleeve gear. Uh, the rack turns the plunger uh, excuse me, yes turns the plunger and to determine the amount of fuel that will be injected. Uh, the plunger is operated by a camshaft and has a fixed stroke due to the cam lobe height. Uh, the plunger has a fixed uh, a fixed beginning of injection and a variable end of injection. It also has a vertical groove, a shutoff groove, and a horizontal annular groove. As the plunger is forced upwards by the camshaft, the fill and spill ports uh, closes and builds up to around 5,000 psi of pressure for the for a remote fuel injector. Uh, the plunger is held in contact with the camshaft by spring uh, by spring pressure. Any excess fuel around the plunger exits the spill and fill ports um, and returns back to the fuel tank, where it is to be uh, cooled down and reused. Um, there is a one to three micron clearance between actually we'll go back here between all the parts here between the 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 plunger and the barrel also they're quite the tolerances are quite small that's why there's no seals here uh, in between the plunger and the and the, and the barrel um, as We'll keep going here. As the engine turns, the fuel camshaft and the pump. As the engine turns, the fuel camshaft uh, in the pump, the flyweights of on the governor are forced outwards. The governor, which I don't have shown, but that's okay. We'll go here. Um, the governor are forced outwards. The governor is attached to the fuel rack. The governor is attached to the to the fuel control rack, so as the engine speeds up or the load changes on the engine, uh, the flyweights of the of the uh, governor um, acts on acts on spring pressure.
Let's see here. We'll go back to this. The governor is attached to the fuel rack so that it changes to change the effective stroke of the plunger as the load is increased and as the engine speed increases. The governor is returned to the full fuel position by the return spring after the engine is shut off. So the governor, as as the engine speeds up, the governor flyweights uh, due to centrifugal force are forced outwards, applying force uh, onto the spring, thus con moving the control rack and turning the control sleeve gear to change the effective stroke of the uh, of of that uh, of that the plunger and barrel assembly for injection. Um, like I said before, as as the fuel comes up to the injector, anything that is not injected uh, through the fuel injector is act, is returned back to the fuel tank where it is stored and cooled. That's my fuel. That's the the flow of fuel for a Port and Helix injection pump.